Today we have as guest in our lecture series, The Levant, The Cradle of Abrahamic Religions, So Miyagawa. So is a researcher at the Institute of Oriental and Occidental Studies, Kansai University, Osaka, Suite, Osaka, Japan, um, respectively a PhD candidate at the Department of Linguistic, Kyoto University. We crossed uh, ourselves several times in our scientific interests because uh, so is, uh, was and still is uh, affiliated at the seminar for uh, Egyptology and uh, Coptic studies at George August University of Göttingen in Germany. Uh, now we have the privilege to hear you so speaking on an interesting topic, introduction to Coptic language uh, and literature in a digital age. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation. Now the floor is yours to present your lecture. And thereafter we can discuss questions and small issues from the framework of Coptology. Okay, thank you, Katalin. Murutumesk, thank you so <laughs> much. Okay, I will share my screen. Um, uh, you, can, you, can you hear me well or? Yes. yes. Okay, great. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, can you see the slides? Yes, we can see the slides. You can great. Start. Thank you. Okay, great, great, thank you. Hello, ladies and gentlemen in Bucharest. All of, all of you are in Bucharest right now, right? I'm not so sure, but Buna mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you so much for uh, invitation, Katalin. Uh, it's a great honor for me to uh, give a lecture here. Um, my name is Somia Gawa. Um, I'm a postdoc student, uh, no, not student, postdoc fellow at the Institute of Oriental and Occidental Studies, Kansai University, Osaka, Japan. And uh, I'm still doing PhD at Seminar for Egyptology and Coptic Studies at Georg August Universität Göttingen. Yeah, my you know, doctoral theme is in uh, Coptic Studies. And this university is the university from which uh, Katalin graduated. And uh, I'm studying ancient Greek, Coptic, and ancient Egyptian for 11 years. And I have 20 academic articles or mainly uh, Coptic philology, Egyptology, Coptic and Egyptian linguistics, and digital humanities, and so on. And I have down 60 academic presentation on Coptic studies and so on. Um, yeah, Romania. First, I'm very sad that I cannot come to Romania because I really respect Romania and I, like, I love Romanian culture. In my impression, Romania is a country of great scholars such as Mircea Eliade, a great scholar of religious studies, Ioan Petru Crianu, a great scholar of Gnosticism and magics, a great coptologist, Alin Suciu, my colleague, and he's my mentor. And last but not least, um, great silologist, Katalin Stefan Popa. And I also would like to visit great Romanian Orthodox churches in this country. Um, by the way, Eliade is really famous in Japan, and there are so many Japanese translations of his essays and novels. But anyway, thank you so much, Kathleen, to invite me for a lecture. I'm so happy to be here. Uh, yeah, my spirit is now in Romania. But I'm, uh, yeah, I'm showing my presentation online, but my spirit is in Romania right now. Okay, and Egypt and Copts. Uh, what do you imagine about Egypt? Maybe pyramids, sphinx, and so on, and also deserts. But these images, like, images came from, come from the pharaonic Egypt, ancient Egypt. Also, maybe you can imagine golden masks of pharaohs from, from, from pharaonic tombs, especially Tutankhamun's mask, which is the most famous ancient Egyptian artifact. Also, maybe gods, Egyptians, especially ancient Egyptians, worshipped, you know, many gods like this god, can you see the cursor, maybe? You can see the cursor, right? 
um, this god uh, Ra Para Horakti. Um, he is a god of the sun. Uh, his head is falcon, but below his head is human. And also maybe you can imagine the hieroglyphs, very unique shape of characters here and here. Yeah, it says Ra Horakti, the name of this god. Yeah, ancient Egypt had a, had a writing system, which is a kind of basic of the great civilization. Sorry. Yeah, and uh, in Egypt we had hier hieroglyphs, hieratics, demotics, and so on. They are called Egyptian Egyptian script. It is it it consists of phonograms like alphabet, logograms, um, one word one letter means one word, and also determinatives, which decides the category of the word. And Mesopotamia had cuneiform, uh, which is like this. It also has phonograms, logograms, and determinatives. The system of the writing system is very similar to ancient Egyptian hieroglyph, but ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs have only consonants, but um, cuneiforms are syllabaries, so they, they, their phonograms have syllables. Also in Mesoamerica, we have, for example, Mayan hieroglyph, which consists of also phonograms, uh, logograms, and also kind of determinatives, but a bit di different from, you know, Egyptian writing system, and also different from cuneiform. In China, we have Chinese character. This is the the oldest form of Chinese character, uh, oracle bone script. Chinese character is mainly logogram, but it has radicals, which are very similar to determinatives, but the radicals are inside logograms. And also uh, there's a Indus script, but this is not deciphered. Maybe one day you will decipher it, who knows? Wait a minute. Like this, um, Ancient Egypt, ancient Egypt had a very complex society with the writing system, and uh, many typical images of Egypt are from ancient Egypt because it is so unique. You see the history of Egypt, first pre-dynastic period, which is before 3100 BCE, and then early dynastic period, from 3,100 to 2,600. This period had the unification of upper and lower Egypt and also King Namo. He um, unified Egypt and all kingdom from 2,600 to 2,100 BC, which had, had uh, great pyramids of Giza and also Sphinx, especially the pharaoh Khufu is very famous, also Josel. Uh, Pharaoh Joseph made the great pyramid, step pyramid of Saqqara, and then, then came first intermediate period, then Middle Kingdom. Middle Kingdom had uh, its capital in Thebes, and uh, it had uh, great literature. It is kind of a renaissance of ancient Egypt. There are many, um, many liter literature, much literature, like Tales of Sinhe, Tales of eloquent peasant, tales of West Papyrus, tales of um, shipwrecked sailor, and so on. And then came a second intermediate period from 1600 to 1500. Invasion, there was an um, invasion of Hyksos and an um, Asiatic people uh, who worshipped the god Seth. And then New Kingdom which is very famous for King Tut, Tutankhamun, and his father, Amenhotep the fourth, fourth, but he changed his name into Akhenaten and uh, made a kind of a religious reform. 
to uh, atom as a only god so this is the first monophase monophasic religion on the earth maybe and also it's very, this period is very famous for valley of the kings after the intermediate period late dynastic dynastic period which had many dynasties of foreign powers for example um libyan dynasty and also kushite dynasty from the south um nubian people um Meroitic, uh, people uh, yeah ruled over the egypt and there were several black black pharaohs like king taharka king shabaka and so on and then came greeks alexander the great um conquered egypt and there came ptolemaic dynasty and greek dynasty but romans um took egypt and make it made it a province and in this period there there was prosecution of christianity and also nationalization of christianity and then byzantine period there there were rise of coptic christian culture and so on and then islamic period and then rise of muslims and arabic speakers and coptic speakers um, uh, the number of Coptic speakers became less and less. And from pre-dynastic to Roman Egypt, we can call it ancient Egypt. And from Roman to modern day Islamic Egypt, we can call Coptic Egypt. And also uh, from Islamic Egypt, we can call, call it Islamic Egypt. Yeah. Coptic Egypt. So the conquest of Egypt by Alexander the Great made the Greek dynasty, Ptolemaic dynasty in Egypt, and the, uh, its capital, Alexandria, became the center of Hellenistic culture and those ac academic activities. There were so many findings in, 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 the, in the science in this uh, period in Alexandria. But Octavianus, later Emperor Augustus, won the Battle of Actium against Antonius and Cleopatra the, the seventh, and Egypt became a province of, of the Roman Empire. And Greek as an um, administrative language uh, through Ptolemaic and Roman and Byzantine periods. And it was a higher language of Egypt. Uh, contrary, Egyptian language was a uh, language of folk so it is a low, lower language and there was a persecution of christianity through first to fourth century and also a mixture of various religious movements for example christian sects manichaeism uh, the it which is the which is a which is a religion uh from persia um but uh, it, it is kind of mixture of Zoroastrianism, Gnostic Christianity, Buddhism, and so on. And they also came to Egypt and uh, they made um, Manichaean sutras, Manichaean uh, religious books uh, translated into Coptic. Also, there's a, there was a hermetic, hermeticism, hermeticism which um, is also kind of mystic religious movement and uh, it also which uh, leads to uh, yeah chemistry also alchemists also there were hellenistic religions uh, like a worship of god therapies also, there were Egyptian polytheism. Also, the, especially Isis was the very, um, very popular goddess in this period. But there was official recognition of Christianity in 313 uh, by the Edict of Milan. Uh, but some scholars are very dubious about this edict. But uh, national, nationalization of Christianity by the Theodosius the Great um, uh, in 392, and but there came a schism of the Christian Church between Chalcedonists 
and anti Chalcedonists uh, in 451 at, at the Council of Chalcedon. Um, yeah, they were uh, they were they were discussing uh, discussing the godness of Christ, godness and humanness of Christ. Um, for Chalcedonists, godness of Christ and humanness of Christ are not mixed, but not separate. But anti Chalcedonists think um, godness of Christ and um, humanness of Christ were merged into one. And anti-Chalcedonists were called uh, Miaphysites. Um, yeah, there were also another. There, there is also another word, uh, monophysites, but uh, which it is monophysites think thinks um, God height of God godness of Christ. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, humanness of Christ was fused into godness of Christ, but it. Uh, but anti Chalcedonists, especially Coptic Church, Coptic Orthodox Church, think, you know, the godness of Christ and the humanness of Christ are um, just merged. And they call themselves Mia Fusites. Mia, Mia Fusites. Mia Fusites. And uh, in this um, period, Egyptian language was written in the Coptic alphabet, which is based on Greek, 24 Greek letters but plus six to seven um, demotic letters. And the language, uh, the language written in this script was co is called Coptic language. And Coptic culture flourished uh, in the, from the early Byzantine time through Islamic time. Um, in the seventh century, uh, Islamic empire, uh, the general Ibn al-As, um, Invaded Egypt and conquered Egypt, and uh, um, Egypt was uh, gradually Islamicized, but still Coptic is living. Copt Coptic Christianity is alive in uh, until this period, until now, in Egypt and all over Egypt. I will talk about it later. Uh, who are Copts? Copts are believers in Christianity that came to Egypt after the first century. The, the etymology of Coptic is like this. Uh, first, ancient Egyptian, Utkaptah, house of the spirit of Ptah. Ptah is the god, creation god, in the ancient Egyptian mythology. And this word became Aegyptos in Greek, Egypt, and then into Arabic, al uh, Akbat, Christians in Egypt. And then European languages, especially Western European languages, borrowed this word like copt in English, copt in French, copton in German and so on, and which I mean, which mean Coptic Christians. And Coptic Christianity has several churches like Coptic Orthodox Church, Coptic Catholic Church, etc. Also, there are some um, evangelical churches, Coptic evangelical churches, and so on. And they are using Coptic language in their rituals. And Copts consist 10% um, of the population of Egypt. So uh, now um, Egypt has 90, 90 million people. So Copts are like, I don't know, one, uh, sorry, 10 million or 8, 8 million or something in Egypt, I think. And there, there is a Coptic diaspora because uh, Copts are often persecuted socially sometimes violently, like by terrorism in Egypt. So they, many of them w went to Australia, to North America, Europe, Singapore, and also Japan. Uh, Japan had the first Coptic church in 2016 and Coptic Pope. Cop Coptic church also has a Pope, uh, Patriarch of Alexandria. And he came to Japan in 2017 to consecrate the first Coptic church established in 2016. And Coptic culture, um, Coptic culture were developed from the late Roman and early Byzantine periods, centering the Christian culture. And uh, yeah, many works like um, letters, sermons, and translations written in Coptic. Many, um, trans there were many translations in Coptic, like hagiographies, also treat 
treatises, also Gnostic texts, and so on, also Gospels, Gospel of Thomas, Gospel of Philip, Gospel of Mary, Mary Magdalene, and so on. And Coptic is the last stage of ancient Egyptian, which has written records from 3350 to 3150 BCE. Coptic alphabet consists of 24 Greek letters and six to seven Demotic letters standardized from the 3rd century. And Coptic textiles and Coptic text architectures are very famous too. And I will talk about Coptic, Coptic and ancient Egyptian language. Um, Coptic is the last stage of the Egyptian language. Egyptian language is the main language of ancient Egypt, uh, which has the re written records from 34 to 32 century BCE until now. Uh, this language was written in hieroglyphs like this, this one, and also hieratics like this one, and demotics like this one. Sorry, this is hieratic and demotic. Uh, sorry, this is hieratic and this is demotic. And Coptic alphabet. Coptic is, is the Egyptian language written in the Coptic alphabet. And Coptic al alphabet consists of 24 Greek alphabets and six to seven demotic letters. Um, this is a Coptic uh, example of Coptic alphabet. This one is um, Afsoten, Eroten. Um, this letter is uh, very similar to Ansho script of Greek, but this letter, Greek does not have this letter. This letter is, came from hieroglyph F, which is shaped like a horned viper. And Coptic is an uh, Afro-Asiatic language, um, which consists of Chadic languages, Berber languages, Egyptian, Cushitic languages, Omotic languages, Semitic languages, etc. Semitic languages are famous for Arabic, Hebrew, and so on. Egyptian uh, consists uh, one branch uh, in Afro-Asiatic language family. Egyptian uh, has only one language, ancient Egyptian, and the later stage Coptic. Afro-Asiatic Afro language family spread from West Asia to North Africa. Um, yeah. From the Horn of Africa, here there are many Cushitic languages, and also Hausa here, Central Africa has many Chadic languages, North Africa has many Berber languages, also there are a big range of Arabic here, Semitic languages is everywhere, from West Asia to North Africa, and also some parts of Central Africa. And the, in the recent According to the recent theory, um, Wahimat, the origin place of Afroasiatic Afro Afro language is in Ethiopia. And some of them came to Egypt, to the north. And uh, from there, Berber languages, Egyptian languages, and Semitic languages were separated. And se some, of the some of the Semitic languages came back to Ethiopia. And now there are some Ethiosemitic languages like, um, like Amharic, uh, Tigray, Tigrinya, and so on. Also, Ge'ez is an Ethiosemitic language. And the oldest Egyptian script was found in Abydos Yuge tomb, uh, which is dated 3,350 3, to 3,150 BCE. Which is an ivory tags. Pro, there are uh, ivory tags with proto hieroglyphs, and this is very famous by the studies of uh, Gunda Dreyer. And the history of Egy Egyptian language. And in the beginning, there was pre-old Egyptian written in archaic Egyptian hieroglyphs, and now came uh, old Egyptian written old Egyptian written in hieroglyphs and hieratics, which is famous for pyramid texts, and then Mesoegyptian, which is famous for uh, literature like Tales of Sinuhe. And the Mesoegyptian became a classical language of Egypt uh, until fifth century. And then came late Egyptian, 
but this is uh, very uh, this uh, this uh, language was written uh, in very short time, short periods, like 14th to 7th century, and then Demotic Egyptian written in Demotic, a very cursive script of hieratic, and this language was written was used from 8th um, BCE, 8th century BCE to 5th century CE. Then came Coptic, written Coptic alphabet, standardized in the 3rd century BCE and used until now. And uh, there was a very big Greek influence in this period, especially in Coptic. So Coptic has so many, yeah, so many Greek loan words like like this, Evangelion, Gospel, Evangelice, evangel Evangelize, Ode. It has also Greek particles like but, also para, which is the, yeah, which is the preposition. And Coptic, Coptic has six major dialects, Boharic, Fayumic, Oxyrinkite, Sahidic, Lycopolitan, Akmimic, with many minor sub-dialects. Sahidic became a koine of Coptic from uh, circa 4th to 11th century, and Boharic became the church language after 9th to 11th century, until today the Copts are using Boharic in their liturgy. And Koine Greek as an upper language, so Koine Greek gave Coptic many long words. Um, Coptic today, Coptic is more abundant since uh, 16th to um, or 16th or 17th century at the latest, but alive as a liturgical language today at Coptic churches, Coptic churches, and 10% of uh, Egypt's population are Copts, and Coptic churches keep their old traditions, like using Coptic hymns, um, also Coptic um, liturgical texts and so on, and there's a Coptic diaspora, and also there's a revitalization movement of Coptic language since the late 19th century. And some of them are raising their children in Coptic at some families. So uh, there exists um, native speakers of Coptic in Egypt and Australia, but they are very few. But maybe I, I have two native speakers of Coptic uh, as, as friends on Facebook. They say they they were raised in by their families in Coptic, so they can speak Coptic as a you know a everyday language. Uh, I want to uh, sh wait a minute. Maybe you cannot hear. Wait a minute. I have to uh, change. Wait a minute. I want to. Yeah, I want to play this, but uh, Flurry Playback Online is not currently supported. You can I'll try opening the browser instead. Wait a minute. Do you have a song or something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a sound, Absolutely. but uh, it doesn't work. Wait a minute. Um, Yeah, um, ah, it, 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 it is not more of sure. This one doesn't work, but uh, this one works. It is not more of sure. Be a mavriti fenetve and emhije and picahi. When I can tirasti, me if non emfau, a woka, ni eterum non evol emon and ten coe will in ni ete or on and ton era o. وان فرنتين خونا براسموس الله نحمين ايول هابي بيت او خن بي اخرستوس يسوزو بن شوي <تصفيق> So this is a lesson of uh, Coptic by the Coptic monk. And uh, there are so many schools, especially Sunday schools, which teach children Coptic, like this. Um, this is uh, this is this was done online because in this COVID-19 situation. 
but the uh, Coptic is still alive, like this form. Also, there's uh, people not... who speak Coptic as an everyday language, like these, these people. Yeah, they are talking uh, about the ch differences between Coptic and Arabic in Buhari Coptic. The Coptic is still alive. Um, and uh, there are some people who try to speak Coptic, especially Egyptian Copts. And we have um, digital humanities uh, projects for Coptic studies. Currently, the formation of a digital infrastructure related to Coptic language and literature is in progress. Under the pandemic of COVID-19, there is a growing demand in the field to prepare the digital infrastructure for studying Coptology, like the 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 video we we saw the online lecture of Coptic, like uh, in this COVID nineteen situation, we cannot go to uh, to libraries and also museums. But uh, if we um, if we can have uh, you know photos of manuscripts online, maybe we can research on it at your home. And to what extent can we get materials and historical documents only on the internet? Can we use digital tools for cryptological research? In this talk, I want to explore this point. Uh, digital humanities are digital heritage of Copts. So uh, digital humanities, like uh, digitizing uh, Coptic manuscripts and also the history of the Cop history of Coptic church is very important for Coptic diaspora because it is their cultural heritage. And but they are dispersed all over the world, so it's very nice to make it online. And also, there are many, not huge, but uh, a quite a big, uh, you know, scholarly community of Coptologists. And they are also dispersed all over the world. So we need to have access to Coptic materials. But uh, from the geological point of view, it is very difficult for them. But now we have the internet and also digital tools, so we can use it and we can um, we can make it as a you know and the you know method to uh, access you know Coptic materials. Uh, articles about Coptic GH projects in Watani and so on. Uh, Watani is a newspaper by Copts, and uh, so many Copts are also interested by. The digital projects in Coptic studies, and yeah, so therefore there is a significance of making projects project results available to the public. And uh, today I want to uh, talk about this project, Kelia Coptic New Testament or Testament Virtual Manuscript Manuscript Room, Coptic Scriptorium, and the Forschungsbereich Elf Sechsunddreißig Tris Magistos. Pleiades and Paths. And so I was working for two Coptic GH projects in Göttingen, Germany for 4.5 years. Uh, first, Kelia project, which is promoting collaboration among Coptic GH projects, develop, development of various tools like OCR, uh, Coptic Education Online, Coptic Natural Language Processing Tool, etc. A joint project, this is a joint project of the German Research Foundation and the National Endowment for the Humanities. And the German Research Foundation Collaborative Research Center, uh, Elf und 36, Education and Region in Cultures of the Mediterranean and its environments from ancient to medieval times and to the classical Islam, which is very long in the name, <laughs> which is very German. <laughs> and uh, I, was, uh, I was belonging to Project Area B5, um, Biblical Interpretation and Educational Traditions in the Coptic Speaking Egyptian Christianity of Late Antiquity. Channel to Canon 6. Uh, sorry, there's a uh, Japanese here, but uh, the Kelia project, uh, which uh, is for development of various tools in collaboration with the Coptic Studies project, like this one, Coptic Dictionary Online. 
uh, which is uh, awarded DH Awards 2019 Best DH Tour or Suite of Tours. You can search COP Tours here, and you can also search the words in the Copra, um, which has the link to the biggest uh, Coptic Copas, Coptic Scriptorium. And also, you can see the the frequency of the word, and also you can have the Greek loan words here. Uh, the, the data of Greek loan words were um, were provided by the uh, the Greek loan words project, Greek uh, in the database and uh, database and dictionary of Greek loan words in Coptic project, which is a project of uh, German Research Foundation in. Uh, in in at at uh, Freie Universität Berlin, Free University of Berlin, and we also provide Coptic and NLP service like um, morphological parser, syntactic parser, and so on. And also we pro, uh, provide uh, Coptic OCR. So with the OCR tool, you can you can you can you know you can recognize the the computer can recognize the Coptic letters on the book or on the in a print and so on and you can you can you know you can take the digital encoded letters of coptic from the book using this software and you can use it as your corpus digital text corpus and so on you can search coptic words search phrases etc this is very very uh, useful tool and uh, zonda forschungsbereich is a german research foundation collaborative research center and uh, this project uh, continued five years from 2015 to 2020. Um, and I worked for the project of the Copt Coptic studies. And we made the digital editions of uh, Shenouti Canon 6. And also we did uh, kind of the texture use study, intertextuality studies of uh in between Shenute Canon 6 and Coptic Bible. And I want to talk about the project. Yeah, the aspects of the study is digital humanities and corpus linguistic study on Shenute and Besa's text reuses using a digital text reuse detection tool. And uh, we aim at uh you know we aim at discover Dis discovering formal characteristics of text reuses of Shenouti and Besa, like alternation quotations or like quotation signals. And uh, we wanted to find more unknown text reuses, like, and which can be evaluation of text reuse detection tool tracer, which we used. And also, we can contribute to Coptic linguistics and Septuagint studies because um, there are so many uh, quotations from the from the Coptic translation of Septuagint, Greek Old Testament. The Old Testament was written in Hebrew, but uh, in the Ptolemaic period, uh, uh, they, uh, the, the king of the Ptolemaic dynasty ordered the Jewish scholars to translate the Old Testament into Greek. And um, Copts uh, translated this translation called Septuagint into Coptic. So, the source text of this translation of Coptic uh, Old Testament is Greek Septuagint. And also we want to um, study the functions of the text reuses as an authority of, uh, of, 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 of Abbots, Shenut and Besa, uh, to, toward his or their subordinates, like monks and nuns, this is the workflow of the project. So first we create digital text using Coptic OCR, or there are so many old uh, digital transcriptions using, uh, used by a very old font, ASCII font. So we have to convert these old Coptic digital texts into Unicode. Also we have to manual, we have to do manual inputting and we use the virtual manuscript room, which is the, you know, uh, co collaborative research uh, portal, uh, first made for the uh, uh, Institute for Neuen Testament, Testamentary Forschung in Münster, the Institute for 
a New Testament studies in Musta, which uh, creates uh, Editio Critica Mayo, the very big uh, critical edition of the uh, New Testament, and also Nestoré Arant's uh, version of the Greek New Testament, which is used for many biblical translations in many various languages. And uh, we, yeah, we make uh, philologically annotated XML corpus through virtual manuscript room. And then we use part of speech tagger and tokenizer and lemmatizer made by Coptic Scriptorium. And we make a linguistically annotated XML corpus. And then we use tracer and we found, find many text reuse uses. Text reuses mean uh, quotations and allusions, etc., paraphrases and so on. And we visualize the data by Travis, which is a, a visualization software for Tracer. And uh, we may created the OCR tool with neural networks. Like, so you can, uh, the computer can recognize the Coptic letters in the book and so on. So we can extract the uh, text data from, Cop from the book into a computer. And uh, this is the virtual manuscript room, which was created by the uh, Troy Griffiths and Ulrich Schmidt. And they made it for, uh, for, for the Institute of New Testament in Münster. And uh, this institute, institute is using this, um, this software to create Editio Critica Maior, the very big uh, critical edition of New Testament. And uh, our targets are Shenouta and Besa. Shenouta is a third abbot, a commandrite of the White Monastery Federation in the fourth to fifth centuries. And uh, he contributed to development of the Federation and also Christianity in Upper Egypt. And he also defended Panopolis, a big city near the, the monastery uh, from a raid of a nomadic tribe. And he is a supporter of Syria the Patriarch of Alexandria. And he is the most prolific author in the Coptic language. Um, yeah. and, and Budo or Tito Onandi, famous Coptologists are calling him the most prolific author or the Coptic author par, par, par excellence and so on. And Besa is his uh, disciple. He is the successor of Shenute is the fourth abbot, Akimantrite, of the White Monastery Federation. And he also um, left many letters and also sermons in Coptic. Uh, for, uh, do you know Trismegistos? This is a very nice website, General Info Portal, Central Egypt, between 7th ECE to 7th CE, started as a philological catalog. But um, if you don't know Shanute, you can search Shanute in Trismegistos first, for example, in Trismegistos people. And if you search Shanute in Trismegistos people, you can see this display. And it has the data of Shanute in various languages. In Greek, he's called Shanutios, Coptic Shanute, his male, Egyptian. And the meaning of Shanute is the son of God. And in Demotic, maybe it is called Pasher and Nuta and so on, Necher and so on. And you can also see the attestations by century, attestation by provenance, for example. This, and this is the social network analysis of Shenute. And uh, the, 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 he, there's many um, points circles, which mean the people who had connections with Shenute. And this is a chronological graph of Shenute. So Shenute in the, in the fifth century, there's very few attestations, but in the seventh and eighth centuries, there are many attestations of Shenute in, in, in Pap Papari and also Ostraka. And the uh, name Shenute was found in uh, in Aphroditopolites in the most, which is in the Middle Egypt, and also Memphis, Memphis close to Memphis in the close to Upper Egypt, Arsinoites, Fayum, Heracleopolites, and so on. Also in Edfu, Edfu, also Panopolites, which is a region, region close to Shenute's monasteries. 
However, this is data of all the Chanutes who existed in the history, and Trismegistos people cannot individualize Chanutes. It is the best to use Claremont Coptic Encyclo Encyclopedia for a specific Chanute instead. This is a, a um, Claremont Coptic Encyclopedia, and it has the best um, description of the Abbot Chanute. And if you want to search the you know, geographical information, you can use Pleiades. So you can see the place of Atribis, Atripe, where Chanute made his monasteries, or he led monasteries. He's not the first abbot, but uh, his uncle established his, these monasteries. And also there's a very good uh, project past uh, which has a mag magnif magnificent cat catalog and atlas of Coptic literary manuscripts. And here you can, see, you, you can find the geographical information, also the author, the information of the author, information of manuscripts, and so on. Yeah, so on the internet, you can, you can do so many things. By the way, Katarin, how many, how many minutes do, we, do I have? Your time, we have time. It depends on your presentation. Then okay, okay, then I can, I can continue we have to talk. some questions, but take your time. Please. Okay, okay, and this is the place of Shenute. Here is Atripe, and in Atripe, there are three monasteries of Shenute Red Monastery, White Monastery, and Women's Monastery. And Shenute, so we, our target is Shenute's Canon 6. Shenute's Canon 6. Shenutes Canon 6 is a compilation of his letters and sermons. It is uh, written in six codices or copied in six codices, and uh, which has approximately 325 existing pages. And there are five works, at least, in this Canon 6. Most of them are letters. And themes of this uh, Canon 6 is accusations against Shenute of excessive violence. He killed a monk uh, by this spring. Um, but the, some monks, fellow monks, uh, accused him of murder, but he, uh, he justified himself. Uh, Shanute justified himself using uh, the quotations from the Bible, etc. And there's a, there was a letter about Shanute's illness and also problems of the female community. And also, uh, this is a, this is a overall theme of these uh, letters, monastic rules. He was very keen on monastic discipline and so on. So he accused uh, many monks and nuns uh, for bio violation of the monastic discipline. And this is a white monastery library. Uh, white monastery was an important scriptorium, the place, place to product, produce manuscripts. And also, it was a big translation center in Upper Egypt from Greek to Coptic. And uh, originally, there must must have been one thousand codices, and remains of more than three hundred books pre are preserved nowadays. And uh, there were there are works of Shenute more than 100 manuscripts, codices, um, Coptic translation of the Bible, more than 90, 90 codices, other monastic works, sermons, saints' lives, hagiographies, liturgy, cano church law codices. And here's the map of the White Monastery. Um, here, is, here, is, here was a library and here was a manuscript cache. From these two places, um, people found so many Coptic codices. Uh, but uh, these codices were dispersed throughout the world, especially in West Europe and also Russia and also in the United States, also Michigan here. In the 18th to 19th century, leaves and fragments of books acquired by travelers and traders were sold to the European merchants, European buyers, 
And in 1883, cache of remaining leaves discovered, and most of them were taken by uh, French, uh, French dealers, French um, government, and most of them came to the Bibliothèque Nationale de France. And today, library dispersed in 40 collections worldwide. The biggest, the big collections are in Paris, Bibliothèque Nationale de France, and in Vatican, Vatican Library, Biblioteca Vaticana Apostolica, and Napoli, Biblioteca di Napoli, the Biblioteca Nazionale di Napoli, and also in Barcelona, Palau Libes Collection, Palau Libes Collection, also British Library, Manchester, also Chesabiti, also in Berlin, and also, uh, sorry, uh, it was, uh, cut here, but the University of Michigan has many uh, white monastery codices. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, there was lack of cure for manuscripts from the Middle Ages, from the 17th century. These manuscripts were sold to travelers and dealers, and uh, especially uh, Cardinal Stefano Borgia acquired more than 2,000 leaves, and uh, most of the leaves were, are now uh, preserved in Vatican and also in Napoli. Vatican has many bibli uh, biblical codices and manuscripts, but uh, uh, Napoli, Naples has many geographical and also patristical uh, codices. And Shenote Canon 6 was dispersed uh, into many libraries. Most of them were in here, Paris, Bibliothèque Nationale, and the second, Naples, Bibliothèque Nationale. And also his uh, successor, Besa, uh, wrote many letters and summons, and uh, these uh, letters and summons are preserved in codices A and B, so called. Uh, Mon B A Mon B B Monasterio Bianco B A B A and B B and British Library has the big portion of it. The second Naples Biblioteca Nazionale has uh, one hundred twenty leaves of this uh, minus, uh, codices. So most of the you know fragments and codices are in Europe actually, not in Egypt. Um, and uh, we have a very big um, corpus uh, portal of Coptic, Coptic Scriptorium, which is a project of the National Endowment for the Humanities, which has the part of speech for each Coptic words and also translation and also the uh, language of origin, like this is Shunagoge, this is a synagogue, uh, it, it is from Greek, and so on, also which has the uh, you know, this syntactic annotation, which one is subject and which one is object, etc. And this is the biggest Coptic uh, corpus in the world. And we are using, uh, we, we are using their tools for our research. And they also use, this uh, project also use our data. So we provide the data to this uh, Coptic scriptorium project and they, they, you know, publish it uh, in their, they, uh, you know, corpus, and people can read our our edition of Shenute Canon Six uh, with this with these annotations, part of parts of speech, etc., and also translation. And we also use Coptic OneNet, which is a database of synonyms and hyponyms, hypernyms, and so, so on. This is a you know, um, conceptual dictionary, dictionary. So we can see the categories of the words and also, you know, hierarchy of the words. And in Shanute, he, he quoted uh, the Bible uh, very often with the alternation of the words between co-hyponyms, like co-hyponyms are hyponyms under one hypernyme. So cat and dog are co-hyponyms uh, under the hypernyme animal, etc. 
So we also use this Coptic OneNet, uh, which was created by uh, people from Oslo, Singapore, and Göttingen. I was I am also a member. And Tracer is a you know Java program, which is written in Java script. Yeah, not Java script, but Java language. Java script is different language from Java. Java is one of the computer language programming language, which has a uh, 700 algorithms and which uses an XML config file, etc. We also use a high performance computer, Rudel, for the remote access. And uh, this is a visualization software, Travis. And uh, so here is the Chanute's one codex, and here's VESA, VESA's letters and sermons. These circles mean uh, quotation uh, candidates, and green one is very probable quotation candidate, and yellow one is less probable quotation candidate. And we can also have alignment visualization. Um, so here, there are two texts. One, the red line, red line is from a Sayyidic Bible, and the blue line, blue line is from a Shinute XF Codex. Here they are different, but from here they they have the same line, same phrase. So we can see the same place, like same quotation, this quotation very vividly. And the traces first results, we found uh, more than ten thousand, ten thousand uh, trans uh, text reuse candidates between Sayyidic Bible and Besa and 8,000 um, candidates between Sayyidic Bible and Canon 6, but uh, these are too many, too many text reuse candidates, so we have to reduce it. And so we use the Sahidic sum. Sahi by the way, Sahidic is a dialect of Coptic, the major dialect Coptic, of Coptic, and Shenute, uh, read, was, uh, Shenute wrote the, his letters and sermons in, in the Sahidic dialect. And Psalms in Coptic monasticism, desert fathers and mothers uh, use uh, Psalms very often. They uh, recite, 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 the, the recitation of the Psalm is very, very often among desert fathers and mothers, both in solitude and with others. Also, they use uh, uh, the Psalms at rituals and liturgies at Cenobitic monasteries, like in the Pacomian monasteries, Shenutian monasteries, etc. And in Pacomian rules, there's a rule uh, that monks should, uh, should remember at least 20 Psalms by heart, etc. And you can home typologize Coptic Psalms manuscripts into four groups manuscripts of the Psalms, Psalters. Sal Manuscripts for rituals like lectionaries, prologions, and so on, also quotations by Shinute, by Pacom, and so on, Pacom use, and occasional use, occasional uses, uh, some uh, were used in magics and also in school exercises. This is a very famous uh, Salter, Coptic Salter in British Library, uh, OR 5000. And we found a new uh, quotation newly found quotation unknown to previous research, six between Psalms and Besa, 14 between Psalms and Shinuti Canon 6. Actually, uh, Besa was uh, thoroughly researched by uh, Karl-Heinz Kuhn. He found so many quotations. He was a very keen scholar to, to, to detect quotations, but we uh, found six quotations which he cannot find he could not find. Also, we found 14 quotations between Psalms and Shannon Canon 6. Shannon Canon 6 was thoroughly researched by Wiesmann and Amelino, but they could not find these 14 quotations. So this is a good kind of very good results. Yeah, also there are many idiomatic text reuses. Teresa also found so many idioms like fear the road, Fear God, before God, everyone who works for the lawless, lawlessness, and so on. Tracer also uh, detects this, this kind of, you know, 
uh, idiomatic phrases as quotations, but we cannot we cannot we cannot say that this is from Psalms and so on because in Psalms there are many attestations of this phrase. So also in the other books of the Bible, we have many attestations of this phrase. So we cannot identify uh, the source of the quotation. And uh, this is one of the you know uh, example of a no quotation. And Chanute, uh, this is Besa. Besa changed, for example, the pronoun. Also, he deleted the phrase and so on. This one is also a uh, new quotation in Besa and Psalm. Uh, he just changed the uh, tense of the sentence. And this one is uh, he changed the verb phrase into a uh, prepositional phrase but this is a very in very ob obvious you know quotation from the psalm and in this uh, in this passage he quoted uh, like four four quotations four, four four passages from the psalm so he has uh, uh, allusion from exodus and so on like like this passage, Shanut and Beza have have so many quotations and allusions from the Bible. So it's very interesting. Like and all men from whom you will get no gain in this place, and then the quotation you will pursue with your whirlwind and vex with your wrath. And another quotation: the fire shall devour them. The angel of covenant. This part is a allusion from the Exodus shall take them and remove them outside the wall of the community and shall moreover disperse them. Even the dust which the wind scatters, this is a quotation from the Psalm 1-4, scatters upon the face on earth. As it is written, here's a signal of the quotation. For as much as they loved the curse, it came upon them. They did not desire the blessing. It fled from them. This is a quotation from Psalm 108-17. Sorry. And uh, we also did the research on quotation index phrase like signal of quotation and head safe as it is written, which is attested 49 times in Shannon's Canon 6 and 36 times in Besa. And we found there are three positions pre post, inserted, and post post. And pre post one is like this. Um, this uh, signa and het sechene psalmos, as it is written in the psalms, is preposed before the quotation. And this is inserted one, like and het sef, as it is written, is inserted inside the quotation. And we did kind of, uh, you know, statistical research on this. And we found the stylistic difference between Shenut and Besa. Shenut uses post post Postpose signals very often, but Besa uses preposed uh, signals very, very often. Like this. Yeah. Um, maybe this, um, yeah, sorry, I, we also did syntactic you know, analysis linguistically. Um, but um, probably this means that uh, Shanute is more, you know, eloquent, he's more skillful in his um, writing skills, and he uses more inserted and post-posed uh, quotations. But Besa uses uh, more direct you know, signals, uh, which is preposed before the quotation. So, yeah, like this. Um, so, yeah, in the preposed quote, uh, uh, quotation signal, you can see the, uh, you know, the readers can, you know, can 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 con conceive the quotation very well, because first, Besa says this is a quotation. Then he he makes a quotation, but in Shenute, he first quotes a quotation, or he in intertwined his inter intertwined his um or inter interweave, he, he, he interweaves he, the quotation from the Bible in his argument and he, um, he 
uh, he implies this is a quotation using this quotation index phrase after the quotation or inside the quotation. This is the conclusions, the project of Sonderforschungsbereich uh, LF36 and ETRAP have collaborated working on text releases in Chanute's Canon 6 and base letters and summons. We found quotations unknown to the previous studies in both corpora. With newly found quotations, we conducted a study on the location of, uh, of the quotation signal, and BESA uses more proposed uh, quotation signals than Chanute. Perhaps this indicates that Chanute embed, embeds uh, biblical quotations more skillfully than BESA in his argument. And uh, yeah, so we, uh, we, uh, we are now working on Coptic Wordnet and uh, we can do the full application of Coptic Wordnet to Tracer. And maybe this will uh, make us find more allusions than quotations or more complicated quotations, uh, alter very much and so on. And uh, so, yeah, yeah, we have, we explored many Coptic digital humanities projects but the outreach is the key. You can study Coptology on the internet to a certain extent using these tools and portals. We also did the online workshop, Digital Coptic 3. You can see it on YouTube, actually. We, 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 we published many videos. And also Digital Coptic mailing list is there. And you can get the recent information on digital tools for Coptic studies, but we need to proclaim our project or proclaim or uh, advertise our projects and tools more on websites, blogs, SNS in various languages because, um, yeah, we yeah, have probably half of the Coptologists know our project, but not the other half. So, um, yeah, in, and also in this COVID-19 situation, we really have to have these digital tools and digital you know, digital methods, but uh, people cannot use it uh, very um, um, efficiently. So we have to teach and we have to you know, advertise, advertise our tools and photos. And uh, we need to exchange our products and data each other too. We have to be open. And uh, to, for the first development, we have to make the, our data uh, in the you know, in the proper license, like uh, Creative Commons. Uh, and uh, in this license, you can, you can use our data easily without any permission and so on. And in this way, we can develop our, you know, our digital projects and those tools more and more. And also not only academic institutions, but also a private game company is now uh, very, eager on working on the digital humanities projects in not in Coptic studies, but Egyptology, like Ubisoft, which is a creator of Assassin's Creed. And they have hieroglyphics initiative and they use uh, artificial intelligence to translate hieroglyphs into English and also recognize hieroglyphs and they do OCR for hier hieroglyphs, etc. Et this is a very good, um, you know, very good initiative uh, for all the private companies and maybe other private companies will follow Ubisoft and uh, our digital humanities field for Egyptology and Coptic studies will be more flourished and more prosperous. So thank you. And uh, so this is uh, my talk. And uh, if you have questions, please feel free, please feel free. Oh, thank you very much, dear. So this was an impressive, brilliant presentation for us. Uh, it is very helpful for our researchers at the Institute of Advanced Studies in Levant Culture and Civilization and to the students uh, in Bucharest interested in uh, late antiquity in uh, uh, digitalization of manuscripts and, of course, in Coptic uh, and Oriental studies. Um, I'm sure that we have different questions. I myself, I took some notices and I will 
um, ask you some details, but uh, now I would uh, wait a little bit for questions from other sides. Uh, first of all, I have to tell you that one of our uh, um, uh, one of our people from the institute uh, would like to congratulate you for this region. Oh, thank you. In presentation, um, and uh, there are another one uh, wishing to congratulate you for this uh, passionate presentation. Thank you. Uh, so, from the other side, see if we have questions, students and uh, attendants to this meeting. Yeah, there's a question from Anna Maria Radukan. Uh, yes, I will uh, read the question for okay. Anna. Uh, there is a question from Anna Maria Raducanu. Uh, he, she is a Byzantine scholar yeah. and asks the question, how difficult it is for a student in ancient Greek to deal with Coptic? It's, What's your meaning? Actually, it's very easy for Greek specialists to read Coptic. Uh, can you see the... Uh, can you see the um, Google Chrome? Internet browser. I'm sharing the Copas. Um, for example, uh, there's a Procross homilies. Um, yeah, this is a text of Procross homilies. You can see so many Greek words: homoios, homolia, eftaios, and Constantinople. Constantinopolis and Ecclesia and Antemios and Kiproclos to Episcopos and Cusicos and to Kyriake and Volevol and Treutmusov and to Cathedra and meant Arke Arke Episcopos FMAU and Kinestorios to Hyreticos. So Homoios is a Greek adverb, right? Likewise, uhomoria, a homily, eftawos, which is pronounced or you know read or spoken. Hen uh, Constantinople, Constantinopolis. Here is also a Greek word, Constantinople in Constantinople, and ecclesia. This is also a Greek word, but with a definite article, Coptic definite feminine definite article too and Coptic preposition hand in, but in the church, ecclesia, and antemios of antemios, enki pro, proklos, enki is a nominative marker, and proklos is the, uh, yeah, the person name, and this is a uh, subject of the sentence, to episcopos, the episcopos, the bishop, and Cusicos of Cusicos and Kyriake in the Kyriake is the day, right? Sunday. And the, the, the day of the Lord, so Kyriake is, is a Greek word. And vol of vol, this, this means Easter. And, uh, and so on. And this cathedra, you know, this is a bishop's seat. And to meant Archiepiscopos, Archie, <coughs> sorry, Archbishop or Arche Episcopal there, and namely, yeah, Nestorios, the heretic, hereticos, which is also a Greek word. So, <coughs> sorry. So Greek experts, Coptic is really easy. And also the grammar of Coptic is not so difficult, like Semitic grammars. So yeah, there, are very, there are very few conjugations. It is actually not a conjugation, it's just state change, morphological change. Uh, if, we, if the word comes before a noun or before the uh, uh, suffix or pron pronouns, which is like construct, con con uh, construct, uh, what is that? Sorry. Construct state, status constru constructus of the Hebrew, but the Coptic has this uh, construct state system very more broadly. Uh, but Yes, but Hebrew, sorry, not Hebrew, but Coptic is 
has really simple grammar. So, and with the many Greek loans, so for the Greek experts, it's very easy to learn Coptic. Uh, I would uh, have a question. Uh, does the spoken Coptic language today uh, have um, influences from Arabic? Because I know uh, the Christians uh, have borrowed some Islamic terminology um, in order to debate the Muslims when they eat to the region. Um, uh, you've mentioned also um, the newspaper Watani. Uh, is this uh, also a Coptic uh, uh, word or uh, because in Arabic it does mean something, but uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm curious if there is uh, another meaning in Coptic. No, no, it's, a, it's an Arabic word. It's, it means my country, right? Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, it is uh, actually it is a newspaper um, written by Copts in, I think in Arabic, in, and in English, I only read English version, but uh, I think there's also an Arabic version too. Well, Arabic version is original. And also, yeah, uh, from the Muslim conquest of Egypt, uh, you know, the Arabic became the administrative language in Egypt. And Coptic had uh, many Arabic loans, and especially in the, in the, in the medi medicine, and those other technological terms and so on. And there's a very interesting uh, Codex, uh, uh, Codex Shashina, I think, and the uh, French scholar Shashina, uh, he edited this Codex, and it is a medical, magical, you know, medical, magical text written in Sahidi Coptic, but there are so many Arabic loanwords, especially in uh, the words of uh, medicine, the word of herbs, and so on. Yeah, one of my friends is studying on it right now for her PhD study. Um, so after the Muslim conquest, there was a huge language contact between Arabic and Coptic. But Coptic died out uh, in the 14th century as a you know, as a majority language. And the last uh, Coptic composition was made in 14th century, which is the, which is called Triadon, which is a, a religious poem written in a weird Sahidic dialect of Coptic, which is maybe there are some grammatical mistakes because probably the, the author or poet uh, couldn't speak Coptic as an everyday language, but he knows the Coptic grammar as a kind of a textual language or lit written language. And after the 14th century, there was no uh, new composition in Coptic. But in the 18th century, but 19th century, there was a revitalization movement uh, led by Ikradius Labib. And he's an Egyptologist too, uh, by the way. And uh, he made so many textbooks and he made many uh, new words in Coptic. And uh, today there are some native speakers using this word, these words. Uh, by the way, um, in the 17th century, there was a record uh, that uh, there are some people who use Coptic as an everyday language in some villages, remote villages in Upper Egypt, but this report is not so, um, um, not so, um, how should I say, trustable. Maybe it is just a rumor or something. Yeah, this is the last Coptic native speakers, but I'm not so sure. But we can say that, um, you know, the last composition of Coptic in Coptic uh, it was in the 14th century. And after that, Coptic became the kind of moribund language or nearly extinct language, but used in the liturgy. But nowadays, uh, it is revitalized as an identity of Copts. A Coptic can be a identity, a, a tool of identity, especially for Copts, but also there are Muslims who learn Coptic as a Egyptian identity, not Arab, but Egyptian. They think we are Egyptians, not Arabs, and so on. So these people, 
um, tend to prefer Cop Coptic, uh, and some some of them are very keen on learning Coptic. There are many YouTube videos uh, of uh, of lectures of Coptic uh, made by these people. So um, Muslims uh, um, adopt a, a Coptic uh, as an, an ethnicity, basically, like they, they do not identify as Arab, they identify as, uh, as Coptic. Uh, uh, as Egyptian. Uh, or Egyptian, yeah. Um, it's. Um, I wanted. I know uh, this for a fact. Uh, for Christians, for instance, this is uh, a bit more uh, more common. Uh, but um, because in the Muslim religion, the first, uh, the most important thing is that you're a Muslim, and only then comes the nationality. Yeah. But uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for the information. Yeah, um, but these people are really few, so not, mm -hmm. not all the Muslims, but very few Muslims who, yeah, who, 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 seeks, who, who seek, seek, seek for their identity as Egyptians. Mm -hmm. So they tend to study uh, ancient Egyptian and Coptic, and the Coptic is a descendant of ancient Egyptians, so they want to speak in Coptic. And so, yeah. Um, let's come a um, little bit uh, back to late antiquity. And I would uh, ask you something about Shenute, uh, and namely, uh, if I understood correctly, uh, Shenute was characterized as a very um, violent mm -hmm. uh, um, monk. Mm -hmm. And I would um, make a comparison with a Syria case. Maybe you are a little bit familiar with uh, Barsauma of Claudia. Mm -hmm. Barsauma, yeah. Barsauma is uh, portrayed in um, Syriac literature as uh, uh, a typical uh, monk who traveled uh, extensively to Jerusalem, to Palestine, and was very violent against Judaism and against uh -huh. uh, uh, paganism, against uh, uh, idolatry. Um, um, there are some uh, some uh, pictures in the Coptic literature about uh, uh, an anti-Judaism uh, tendency related to the profile of uh, Shenude? Hmm. Yeah, Shenude is, a, yeah, there um, first Shenude is very kind of uh, destroyer of um, Egyptian polytheism, like pagan religions. Yes. He uh, he burned some temples, but it, this is a legend, kind of. And uh, it is written in the life of Shenute. He, you know, he destroyed the temples of Egyptian polytheism, and so on. And he was the the he uh, he blamed Gestios, uh, the governor of Panopolitan region, uh, for not believing Christianity, but secretly believing, um, you know, um, pagan religions like Hellenistic religions and also Egyptian polytheism, and uh, um, and also, but his uh, Shenute himself is also very violent against his fellow monks. He murders, murdered or just he uh, punished some monks, but eventually they died and so on. And he, he's very yeah, active on you know, corporal punishment and he killed some monks and so on. And the fellow monks uh, accused, accused Shenute of murdering some monks. 
uh, eventually by 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 uh, by discipline for for the discipline and so on. And Shinute himself also accused Manichaeans, Origenists, and also Melissians, I think, in one of his letters. And but he it seems he didn't did not know the you know the theology of for example theology of our Origenists and also the teaching of Manichaeans, but he just blamed them. And he sometimes confused confused Origenists with others. And so he, it, it seems he did not did not understand the differences of these heretics. He's very, he's very, um, um, he's very, very, um, how should I say, aggressive against so-called heretics in general. So he, it seems he, it is no difference for him uh, which one is Manichaeans, which one is Origins, but they are heretics for, for him. So he just blamed them as heretics but he I, i'm not so sure about um, his pers perspectives on judaism maybe there is very few there was few existence of jews in upper egypt it, it, of course there's uh, there's it, it's very famous that elephantine island had a jewish community but uh, it was a very uh, a very uh, long time ago uh, than Shenouti's time, so I'm not sure. In Alexandria, it is very famous that the, uh, the city had a big Jewish community, community. And but in Upper Egypt, I'm not so sure about uh, whether there was a big Jewish community or not. So in Shenouti's writings, there were. I'm. I don't know that he wrote a uh, polemics against Jews, he wrote kind of polemics against um, pagans, Manichaeans, and Miletians, and also Origenists. But I don't know the, he, he wrote, whether he wrote uh, Jew, uh, polemics against Jews or not. And yeah, comparison with Barsalma, it is very fam interesting. Um, yeah, but Shinuti did not travel so often. He, in his legend, Life of Shinuti, and also his letters, it seems he went to the council of Ephesus. And in his, in his life, the life of Shinuti tells that he punched Nestorius because Nestorius put the Bible on the seat, his seat. And Shinuti thinks this is very, very heretical, so he punched Nestorius. But it, uh, in the record of the council, has no, uh, has no name of Shinute. The record of the council did not mention the name of Shinute, so we do, we, we do not know that Shinute was really there or not. But uh, in his letters, he wrote he went to Nestor uh, he went to uh, he went to Council of Ephesus with, together with uh, Cyril, Cyril, uh, the patriarch of Alexandria at that time, and uh, Nestorius um, actually actually was uh, expelled to Panopolitan region, the desert of Akumim region, which is the territory of Shenute. So maybe. Yeah, maybe Shinta was there. Probably Shinta was there, and he did some. Um, he actually he he maybe he did some political action to to expel to kick out Nestorius to his territory. Yeah, and so he's a kind of very political figure during in the Upper Egypt. He also defended the Panop the city of Panopolis. Against the rate of the of a nomadic people, Blemius people, um, and he saved the many lives of uh, the people in the city. He uh, he made them evacuated into his monasteries, 
and the monks uh, defended the people. And so, so uh, actually, Shenet is really poli political figure. He can control many monks and nuns, and uh, he con he in the he, in his life uh, it says Shenet uh, uh, made monks to burn. Uh, made monks burn a pe pagan village and so on. So he's also violent, but he's kind of the political leader. So Ariel Lopez, uh, he, uh, he wrote his PhD on this uh, perspective, uh, shown it as a political leader in the late antiquity. He is a political leader for, for, for poor people, poor people, uh, lower class people who uh, who lack of uh, supplies, uh, who are in pov poverty. Um, and she actually um, did many uh, kind of um, helps for these uh, poor people, people, uh, uh, people with lack of food and so on. He controlled the food supplies and so on in this region. And he uh, eventually he evangelized, he, he, he made many people in Upper Egypt Christians, so yeah, he's a kind of political figure actually. Yeah, to evangelize Upper Egypt, he was very, um, very aggressive against pagans, but he also defended people um, from the nomad, from the violent nomad, and um, yeah, in the people in Panopolis were also Christians and also pagans, but Shonote. Uh, defended also the pagan people in Panopolis, and many many of them became Christians. Maybe um, probably because of Shenute's uh, political action, um, Upper Egypt became a very you know Christian uh, region in Egypt. Um, in Lower Egypt, there were many Christians at that time, but Upper Egypt there were many pagans uh, until. Uh, fifth century, there was a there was a Egyptian paganism. Uh, paganism was uh, performed in the temple of Isis in Philae, and uh, in the fourth century, there was a uh, there was a hieroglyphic inscription, the last hieroglyphic inscription in the temple of Isis in Philae, and in the fifth century, there was a the last demotic inscription, and uh, the inscription graffito uh, in the temple of Philae, but uh, in the upper Egypt, like this, um, you know, the paganism, paganism continued very, you know, um, continued until the fifth century. So she not really wanted to change uh, upper Egypt into, you know, Christendom, you know, Christian, you know, um, Christian, how should I say, Christian region. So, yeah. Uh, what, so, what you tell us, uh, comes to me as a very common uh, picture of uh, great figures of late antiquity. And I am sure that uh, the picture, the profile of uh, Shenute, is well integrated in this hagiographic picture of late antiquity. And yeah. maybe uh, his violence is justifiable in, uh, in this uh, circle, because um, maybe this comes from, the, from his dedication to act accordingly with the uh, canons of the church, and this leads to uh, the establishment of a high authority of the church in Upper Egypt. Um, right. I think we are in the same period, and I would like to ask also about Cal Chalcedon. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you know texts, or the, there are some texts in... Uh, Coptic manuscripts about Cal Chalcedon, uh, some perception of, about uh, any uh, uh, perception, any, uh, not reception, but any characterization 
of this uh, council? Yeah, um, in Shenute it's very strange, but Shenute did, did not mention the Council of Kassadun uh, in his letters, but in his lifetime there was a there was the Council of Kassadun. He didn't. He did not mention. It's very strange, actually. Um, but there's there are some hagiographies, hagiographies that, um, uh, and also the desert fathers, they uh, the apothegmata patrum also had some um, some verses to uh, support the anti Chalcedonian. Uh, yeah, sorry, it is not. Uh, sorry, it is not. Maybe it is not apothegmata, but another. Mm, another hagiography, but uh, there, there are some uh, Coptic hagiography to support, you know, anti Chalcedonian uh, dogma and so on. But not in the Shenute. Shenute did not mention about the, you know, the about the uh, Council of Chalcedonia. And also, we don't, we do not know that he supports the anti Chalcedonian, you know, teachings. So we. Um, Maybe Shinute is not so not so interested in the system yes. of the Chalcedonia and the anti Chalcedonia. He's very keen on, you know, uh, he he's he's very anti pagan, very, very anti pagan, but it, actually in his um letters uh, it seems he's not so um keen on this uh, theological you know discussion. So he's very he's a supporter of Cyril, but uh, he did not you know he did not um, uh, he he did not write uh, polemics against uh, for example Nestori, Nestori, Nestorians. Um, actually, he's not not he's not a dogmatician. I think yes, he's uh, he's just uh, I I think he's a political leader. Or he's a he's a Christian, but very, but not so theoretical, I would say. Mm, indeed, uh, thank you very much. So your knowledge is impressive, and for this reason, I would uh, address you two more small questions. Please allow me this. Uh, one of them is about Ephraim the Syrian. Mm. Do you know about uh, uh, any clues uh, of a reception of uh, Ephraim the Syrian or of uh, Isaac, Isaac the Syrian in Coptic literature? Okay. Maybe you should ask Aline for that, but uh, <laughs> I do not have a clue for that. Yeah, there was a monastery of Syrians in uh, Wadi al Natrun. In, yes. In, um, yeah, in Sketis, in, in Wadi al Natrun. So there was five, five monasteries, big monasteries. So one of them is uh, Monastery of Syrian, Syrians. Yes. And they produced many uh, precious uh, Syriac manuscripts there. And Syrians, Syriac Christians uh, lived in this monastery, and probably there were some interactions between Syriac Christians and the Coptic Christians. But mm, I'm I I do not know so much about this. Um, yeah, probably yeah, but I don't I I never encountered. Uh, a quotation from Ephraim the Syrian in Coptic, um, especially um, the Coptic manuscripts, uh, Coptic uh, texts from fourth to fifth century, because it maybe it's too early. But the late texts, I'm not so sure. Maybe in later texts, later works, have some um, quotations from Ephraim the Syrian, and also yeah, maybe yeah, but I'm not so sure. And also Isaac the Syrian, maybe. Mm, yeah, but yeah, we should ask Alim for that because he he's very he's uh, knowledgeable um, about also Syriac and Coptic Christianity. Yes. So, yeah. Um, and 
I'll ask uh, this uh, time exegetical question. Uh, how often are, for example, the Beatitudes uh, quoted or other uh, New Testament passages uh, in Coptic literature in comparison with Psalms, for example, in uh, Shenudes or in his disciples' text? Because I realize that Psalms uh, are very often uh, quoted in uh, monastical literature. And this is also the case in Syriac or in Greek literature. Okay, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, actually I uh, calculated the, you know, quotations from uh, the books in the Bible. Wait a minute, I want to show the graph. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, so the uh, most uh, quoted biblical book is probably the Psalm, or maybe Proverbs, or maybe, yeah, these two are very, very often quoted, and also Isaiah and also Jeremiah. These prophetic books were also very often quoted. But in the New Testament, um, Shanut and Bessa quoted the Pauline letters very often. So they are very keen on discipline. So Pauline letters have many verses about discipline of Christians. And so, and Subsequently, uh, they did not uh, quote Beatitudes or very, you know, very Christian, typical Christian, you know, um, passages in, God, in the gospel. They did not quote these um, passages very often. So, so he quoted um, Psalms, a proverb the best, and the next is Psalms, but he also quoted many Pauline letters, and also major prophets like Jeremiah and Isaiah, but uh, there are very few but small number of Gospels and Acts, and uh, many of them are from the uh, from the Revelations or Apocalypse uh, spoken by Jesus, and so also um, he used the you know more disciplinary you know sayings by Jesus, um, Beatitudes and so on, these uh, Christian uh, thoughts, um, those passages which are very, very, very popular by, uh, by Christians from the ancient times to the, to, the, to the modern day, but he quoted more disciplinary sayings of Jesus, actually. So, yeah, so, so I think his uh, aim to quote the psalm Quote, yes, not some quote the Bible is to discipline the monks and nuns. So, yeah, so Shenut and Besa chose more disciplinary sayings of Jesus than the Beatitudes. How about the Syri Syriac Christians? How about Syriac um, monasticism? Well, Did they quote Beatitudes often or? I would say the situation is not too much different. Uh, categorically, uh, Psalms are the most quoted book in the monasticism, the Syrian monasticism. Um, then uh, we uh, find also um, also Christian uh, toads like uh, quotation from, from the Gospels. This is also um, obvious in uh, some uh, texts, for example, of Dadisho in Dadisho's rule of a uh, monk from the fifth century. Um, but definitely the Psalms are the most quoted books, I would say. Okay. Um, yeah, it's very similar to, you know, uh, Coptic Christianity, especially Shenutian Christianity, yeah. Yes, I would say the, the phenomenon is uh, common in both uh, uh, confessions in Coptic and in, in Syriac 
to. Um, would you like to say something about the last question? Namely, um, I would, uh, I realize that uh, the digitalization pro process um, in the Coptic literature is in, is, is in a very advanced stage now. You have a lot of tools to work with text, to edit text in Coptic, to identify passages, to identify quotations, and this is uh, an impressive stage you realized in uh, this uh, uh, small, I would say, uh, confession of Coptic. Uh, what would be the next step in your vantage point in this uh, process of studies in Coptic manuscripts? Um, yeah. Um, okay, yeah. So we, we, we archive Okay, we we had we made many digital archives of Coptic manuscripts. For example, the Münster, the University of Münster made the New Testament manuscript, manuscript room, and they made uh, many trans uh, many diplomatic editions of Coptic New Testament fragments and also codices, and also the people of the Göttingen Academy uh, made. Are making the edition, diplomatic editions, and also critical edition of Coptic Old Testament, uh, which is a succeeding project of the, uh, with the, uh, the this um, um, Septuagint project in Göttingen. Uh, and um, also, um, there are various, um, you know, projects uh, uh, who are working on Coptic papyri, for example, papyri.info, have many uh, texts uh, written uh, on Papyri and Ostraka in Coptic. Um, yeah, this the next stage is uh, to interlinking uh, the projects and the results of the projects. This is called linked open data. For example, museums have many photos of Coptic manuscripts and uh, some Many of them are, are making a digital exhibition of Coptic manuscripts, and they provide the photos. For example, Gallica has so many photos of Coptic manuscripts from the Bibliothèque Nationale de France, and also Digital Bodrian also has uh, many, uh, but it has not so many Coptic manuscripts, but uh, some Coptic manuscripts on the web. And this recently, Chester Beatty Library made the big digital collection of Coptic manuscripts, include, including Manichaean materials such as Kefalaya. You can see all the pages of Kefalaya, very digitally. And also Boduma Lab, Boduma collection has many Coptic, Coptic papyri, but they publish uh, the photos of Coptic papyri on the web. And they, um, Boduma, Papa, Boduma Lab and also Gallica and also Vatican. Vatican also has some Coptic manuscripts online, and which is supported by a Japanese um, Japanese company, NTT Data, for the digitization. And uh, yeah, these, but especially Vatican, Boduma Lab, Chesabiti Digital Collection, and uh, Digital Bodrian, and also uh, Gallica, and some parts of the British Library has very advanced uh, technology called IIIF, Inter International Interoperativity, sorry, International Image Interoperativity Framework, uh, which uh, promotes the, you know, linked open data or, you know, interoperativity between projects. For example, uh, if you have a IIIF manifest, you can use the photos on the server of, uh, of Gallica Bibliothèque Nationale, Bibliothèque Nationale de France in your home page and you can annotate the image, the manuscript, and you can make your, uh, for example, uh, diplomatic edition 
and so on. And uh, for the diplomatic edition, you can use de facto standard format uh, TIXML, text encoding initiative, uh, which is a which is a um, organization to standardize the format for humanities. And uh, there are many tools for this TIXML. And you can, so you can, um, um, yeah, if you make a transcription, a digital, tra digital um, diplomatic edition or critical edition in TIXML, you can, and you, if you make, uh, make it uh, open to everyone, for example, with the license uh, of uh, Creative Commons or public domain, maybe many people can use your data, and uh, in this way, you can, you know, uh, you you can uh, make a network of linking of the uh, museums and also academic organization or and also individuals, and uh, you can make a big network to you know, to research, you know, Coptic manuscripts digitally. Paths is doing this very good. Um, this project uses uh, so many linked up data from like APIs and so on, and from the Tris Magistos and from Pleiades and so on. And uh, it, um, it uh, summarized the, all the data, all the metadata of the authors or manuscripts and so on. And also you can, go to the if the museum has a digital image on on the on its web you can go to that photo and so on and uh yeah in this way you can make kind of a you know big um photo or automatically actually the famous one is europeana uh, which uh, uses this triple if images from many museums and libraries and which uh, creates a big portal to search everything in Europe. And also Japan, Japan has Japan Search, uh, which is like um, kind of uh, Japanese version of Europeana, uh, which uh, collects uh, the tripwire data from various museums and libraries to create a big portal of uh, Japanese studies and so, and so on. So in, in the next stage of the digital Coptic studies is to create a kind of a system to of interoperativity and to create a big search search engine for all the Coptic manuscripts and so Hats is go, is becoming like that, like Japan search for Coptic or Europeana for Coptic. Paths is a, a P A T H S is a project of a sub university Sapienza University of Rome, uh, which is led by a, Professor Dr. Paola Buzzi. And this project is becoming like a, like a Europeana for, and also it has like atlas in it, everything, like Trace Megis or something, for, of, of Coptic studies. So I'm really looking forward to seeing the advance and the progress of this project. So, so the, yeah, as, as I said, the answer, my answer is, um, you know, interoperativity is the key to the future of the digital Coptic research. Thank you so much for this uh, uh, thoughts. Yeah. Uh, we share with you the same actually idea that net network of projects is the next topic, the topic of our generation and uh, from this respect, we invited you to speak on this uh, impressive lecture today. And uh, we thank you again for the brilliant lecture and for this opportunity to learn from you about Coptic studies in a digital uh, time and a digital period. We hope that we keep in touch and yeah. that there will be uh, possibilities, real possibilities after the pandemic to invite you <laughs> in Bucharest to visit our Institute for Advanced Studies in uh, um, Levant Culture and Civilization and to, of course, 
to further interact and to cooperate in our common scientific projects. Thank you so much, So. Yeah, and thank you, Catherine. We really enjoyed your lecture. Thank you, thank you so much for this, uh, this opportunity. By the way, I found the graphs of the, you know, quotations oh, yes. in some, yeah, and so this is a, a quotation ratio of uh, Canon 6, Old Testament is 60%, New Testament is 38%. And so, mm -hmm. so based on Proverbs, Psalms, Isaiah, Jeremiah are very often, but Matthew and Luke also have, uh, you know, quite number, quite, quite percentages. And in Shanute, Psalms is uh, most uh, quoted, Proverbs and Jeremiah, Isaiah, but Luke is 4%, Matthew is 4%. And so, and this is very interesting that uh, if you also count the quotations in the Syriac literature and compare it with Shanute and Besa, it is very, very interesting. And uh, yeah, we can yeah collaborate with each other maybe in this uh, Christian Orient in a project to, you know, study you know, quotation ratios. And so, yeah, yeah, let's keep in touch. Thank you so much. I really want to come to Bucharest in person yes. or in you are see you. Our guest. Yeah, thank you. Let's hope that the pandemic will be very soon at the end and then we can continue our project and meet again in person. Yeah, mult mesk, mult. What should I say? Mult mesk, right? All the best to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.